From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello there, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. Hello, Peter. Hello, Roger. Good to see you. Good to see you. Roger, the other day... Didn't you promise me that you were going to look up a few words that are gradually infiltrating American English? That's right. Sort of a new import? There's been a lot of uh, traffic on the internet about this recently in various forms, Uh, so it seems to be something that's in the air. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about British and American English, it's nearly always words that people are referring to or phrases. Mm -hmm. Um, They don't seem to talk about Um, accents anymore as they did in the past. That seems to have all settled down because there are so many different accents around in all of our countries. True enough, yeah, Yeah. even in America, yeah, Spanish accents a lot. We started with um, ginger for hair. Right, ginger instead of red hair. Instead of red hair. And uh, something that came to my attention is uh, in Britain, ginger-haired people, or if you like red-haired people, often get teased or even, Uh even bullied in the worst case. Uh-huh. And apparently that's not so in America. No, I can't remember that. Like I cited the, ex- uh, I quoted the example from from, from Charlie Brown, yeah. and he's in love with a little red-haired girl who is supposed to be very, very cute. Yes. Yeah. So the, you have to keep this in mind. There are cultural differences as well. So when a word crosses the Atlantic, it doesn't necessarily carry with it all of the connotations and mm-hmm. everything else that is part of the meaning. Mm-hmm. We've got some some interesting cases because. Sometimes the word already existed in the United States with a different meaning. For example, if I say bum, B-U-M. Well, that's a person who is not very tidy or who lives in the street. Right. Whereas the the first meaning for a British person is, well, what you're sitting on right now, part of your anatomy. Ah, okay. No, that's maybe your, I don't know, if you want to be polite about it, you're behind. Yes. (laughs) Um, And then there are things with A that I can't say on radio. (laughs) (laughs) So there are those cases where if a a word is used, it's not really a new word for the Americans, Mm -hmm. but rather a new meaning or a different meaning for a word that already exists. Mm -hmm. So another one would be um, the use of cheers, uh, where Mm -hmm. in Britain the word is multipurpose. It's not just used... When you kind of toast people, if you're having a drink, mm-hmm. but it's used as hello, goodbye, um, excuse me, thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's just, it's almost limitless in its applications. In No, in, in the United States, basically, it is only for toasting. There was even a sitcom named Cheers, yeah. which played in a bar. Yeah. Um, and so that's imported now in that new meaning well, into the United States? People who um, actually wrote to the BBC in London, claimed to have come across the use of cheers in a British way. Uh I would never say that. This is not based on research, but Mm -hmm. we do have some fairly solid statistics thanks to the dictionary publishers, Uh Merriam-Webster. You mentioned them Uh a few weeks ago, and they actually supplied some graphs to show a sudden surge in usage Uh of various things. For example, and this, this kind of underlines that ginger for red hair may have its origin in the Harry Potter books. Ah, okay, because Harry Potter's friend has that yeah, hair color, yeah. doesn't he? And um, the American edition of Harry Potter, there are changes. Are there? Some words survive. Um, they're thought to be so necessary to the story or uh-huh. for other reasons they survive. And uh-huh. these... Of course, with the huge sales of those books, of course, yes, there's bound to be a certain influence on right. everyday. What life. other words are there that have? It's gone difficult up. to say how many go have come from the readings of um, Harry Potter stories. Uh-huh. But to chat somebody up is that to, to try to, to try to talk to somebody in the streets? Uh, no, this is more to try maybe try to get a date with somebody to pick, to pick somebody up. Yeah. Ah, okay. Or um, someone has gone missing, where an American would normally say has disappeared. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'd say, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that has gone up in usage? Yes, enormously. Uh Uh-huh. 
And this seems to start all around the same date, the end of the 1990s, with the appearance of the Harry Potter novels. Okay. So I think... Um, Oh my God! This, J.K. This Rowling has had an influence on American English. If definitely. only marginal, it's there. Um, I think we got to stop right here now because I have to learn some new vocabulary. <laughs> 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 okay, let's just say goodbye. Bye, bye, dear listeners. Hear you next time. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.